Welcome back to another Wimbledon Channel video. We're continuing to look at ancient Roman sources today, and these sources in particular are looking at religion in the everyday life of ancient Rome. We know that religion was a crucial part of life for ancient Romans, and one of the ways we can tell this is how many religious statues and temple shrines we find in the ancient world. This is gonna be a relatively longer video looking at a whole range of different marble statues that have been uncovered from Pompeii and other surrounds. So let's have a look. First up, we've got three fountain heads. These fountain heads were made from marble and were a kind of ostentatious display of how much wealth the owner had, very similar to today. So these fountains were found in private gardens and it very much showed the taste of the owner because they obviously have paid for what they want to have in their garden. Here we have three, uh, one of which is a, a theater mask, another is a young satyr, and then we have a woman as well. Next up, we have a really interesting sculptor's model. This was also found at Bay. It's made from plaster. Bay was the spa town that was swamped by rising sea levels uh, with a nearby um, Campi Flagra volcano emptying its magma chamber. What happened here was you had Greek masterpieces, statues in huge demands throughout the ancient Roman world to decorate villas and gardens and public buildings. So what they did was they actually made plaster casts of the original statues in order to make copies. It's actually exactly what we do these days. This is a fragment of a cast made to be the sculptor's hand and it was found with 400 others in Bayi, uh, which is refuse obviously from a, a workshop of some kind that was producing statues for clients around the Bay of Naples and in Rome. Our first source is two of the six temple shrines that were found on the wreck of the Camaccio. This is a ship that was lost at sea somewhere between 25 and the first year BC. It's probably part of the cargo, not part of the ship. And what it depicts is two relatively small shrines, one, to Venus and the other to Mercury. Cupid guards the shrine that contains Venus and Venus is holding a military trophy. And the other one is the statue of Mercury, which is the god of trade. They're holding a Cadaceus and a money bag. The next source is a stunning piece of art. It's two Cupids riding a dolphin. It was found in a private garden in Pompeii and it's a fountain head. Water would have spouted from the mouth of the dolphin when it was being used and it reclined among variegated marbles. It's a beautiful piece of work, a really stunning, intricate kind of detail, especially on the, the cupids themselves, and would have cost a lot of money to be made at that time. The next source we have is also a fountainhead, and this is a, a neri, basically a, it's like a good sea spirit. And this one's riding a, a sea monster. We think it looks, a, it's like a shark or a pistrix, they would have called it in the ancient Roman world. And the water also would have come from, uh, from its mouth. Uh, this this Nereid uh, riding a, a sea monster is found in the sea uh, off the spa resort of Bay, which is in the Bay of Naples. And it was also probably from a, a villa's garden from probably around the first century AD. Next, we have a frieze that isn't religious in nature, but it does depict the temple. Basically what's happening here, if you have a look, it looks like most of the buildings are kind of on a slant. And what happened was there was a major earthquake which struck uh, Campania in 62 AD and caused a whole bunch of Pompeii to be destroyed, as well as parts of Herculaneum. And this frieze depicts that. So the temple and the statues in the town's forum are swaying and yeah, so that's, that's why it looks like it's on its side. What we now know is the earthquake was probably uh, a prelude to the 79 eruption of Vesuvius as the, uh, the magma chamber would have been filling up of the volcano. Next up, we've got another votive relief. This is from the Temple of Hercules at Ostia. It's, it's also plaster. And this one is about the Temple of Hercules and predicting the future. What happened was this was done using ballots on the right of the votive relief, we can see fishermen miraculously pulling up a statue of Hercules uh, and a, a chest from the sea. And in the middle of the relief, we see the, the statue uh, delivering a, a ballot from the chest to the human attendant. An open ballot then appears above them. 
And on the left, you can see the attendant delivering the prediction to the unseen person who has requested it. And we have Victory hovering above them. As I said, this is a plaster modern reproduction. The original marble one dates to around 70 to 65 BC. And this is lent to us by the Musea Ostienza. This next statue is a fascinating example of the influence of Egyptian religion on ancient Roman society. This statue, despite missing his face, we know is Hermanubis. It's a combination of Hermes, the, the Roman god who's kind of a, a guide to the souls of the dead, and Anubis, who was also the Egyptian guide to the souls of the dead. So these were combined, and we see a new god developing, Hermanubis. This statue was also found at the spa resort of Bayi, along with the marble hand and other items. So there's a collection of just some of the ancient Roman statues and shrines that we find in Pompeii and Herculaneum. Hopefully this video has helped you gain an understanding of what life might have been like in ancient Rome, as well as an understanding of what we can tell about ancient Roman life from statues and other archaeological remains. If you enjoyed looking at this video, check out some of the other videos with the other sources that are found at the Australian National Maritime Museum. Things like household goods and commerce, as well as body casts, all in this playlist. So stick around and enjoy.